All right, we need to have a little chat. You guys have absolutely made this video blow up. I have never posted a video that has gotten any sort of traction on YouTube before, but this video caught some sort of algorithm and has over 1500 views. So I sat down on my couch the other day and I started thinking, man, what could I do that's similar to this video that would be even crazier? And this is what I came up with. I managed to find myself a 44U server rack. And while the server rack may be way more than I'm ever gonna need, I do think it's pretty cool just to have one. I've always been pretty interested in setting up a server rack like this. I never have before just because it's so cost prohibitive. Getting a server rack that's this large is incredibly expensive, especially if you have to ship it. Because I was able to pick mine up locally, the costs were relatively minimal. Servers themselves are not cheap either. And so it's really difficult to start getting into setting up some virtualization stuff unless you're treating it like a business, like for making YouTube videos. Thanks guys. The other thing that makes it difficult to have a server rack this big is it's very loud. Servers are not quiet machines and so it's difficult to find a place to put it in your house that can keep the noise down, but at the same time has the ability to vent the hot air out. I think I came up with an ingenious plan for how to solve all of these problems and my house just happened to be designed the perfect way for it. So let me show you exactly what I did. Step number one was getting the rack into the room. I had a buddy of mine help me get the server rack into my garage and we tried to put it into the room. We realized that it was too wide and we had to take the door off of its hinges. We tried again, and again, it was too wide. I actually ended up having to take the trim off of the door frame in order to get this server rack into the room. Now, once it was in the room, I did kind of have to size it up a little bit. So I put all the side panels, the front and back doors on just to see how big it would be. I quickly realized that there was not gonna be enough room for the back door. And if I really wanted to have enough room for the front door, I'd have to push it all the way up against the wall, which would make it difficult to access from the back. So instead I opted for no doors. We still have the side panels on, but there's no front or back door. Step number two was to run ethernet and power to the room. Now I already had a power distribution unit that I was going to use inside of the server rack. So I knew what plug I needed to have. I did run the electrical myself. I will say, I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video because I don't want that on my conscience. If you are comfortable doing it yourself, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube that'll show you how, I just don't want that on me. The second thing I did was I ran ethernet to the room. This was also relatively easy. I have 10 gig ethernet run to the vast majority of my house. And so I literally just had to flip a box around because it was in my living room before. So that was step two, very easy. Step three was to actually install flooring into this room. I admit it, you don't have to have this. It's unnecessary. I just thought it looked really cool. I have a tendency that, you know, if I'm gonna do something, I might as well make it the coolest thing that's ever been done. This computer setup I have in front of me is a fantastic example of that. Do I need four monitors, one of which is an ultra wide? No, but it's cool. And so I decided that I was going to make this closet the most baller closet that's ever been seen for a server room period. The next step was to seal the room off. And you don't really have to do this. The only reason I did is because I have a tendency to do a lot of woodworking in my garage. And this creates a massive amount of sawdust, which as I'm sure you know, if you own a computer, dust is like the number one killer for your computer components. So I decided that I wanted to make this room as airtight as possible so that I would have the least amount of dust getting into this room. So I installed a threshold at the bottom of the doorway. I installed a weather sealer at the bottom of the actual physical door. And then I ran weather sealant all the way around the door frame so that when this door is closed, there's very little room for dirt or dust to get in. Now the last and final step was probably the coolest. I installed two of these temperature controlled fan units. And if that makes no sense to you, it basically looks like this. The concept being that you can have these things running nonstop all the time, or they also have settings in there where you can set it to say after a certain temperature limit, you turn on. Now, basically how this works is it comes with a, a temperature probe that looks a lot like an audio cable that plugs into the bottom of the unit. You run this wire from the unit wherever you're trying to gauge the temperature at. For me, I ran both of these wires all the way to my server rack. So that way it'll gauge how warm the server rack is. And then based on that, it'll turn their fans on. It's also important to note that I have one of these fans facing in and one of the fans facing out. Now for the inward facing fan, I also installed an air filter just for the exact same reason that I sealed off the door. 
I know as a fact I'm going to be making dust in my garage, and I would prefer to limit the amount of that dust that gets transferred directly into this server room. So the fan at the top is blowing the hot air out and the fan at the bottom is blowing the cold air in. Huge shout out to my dad on this one because I actually saw these units in a closet at his house doing something very similar, releasing the hot air from a computer out into a different room. Now last but not least, because I said I was gonna go completely baller on this server room, if you know anything about me, you know I love the color blue. Like literally everything I have is blue. So obviously I had to incorporate just a little bit of me into this server rack. So I ran blue LED strips all along the entire thing. There's a hundred foot of LED strips inside of this server rack. And I'm gonna tell you, it looks so cool with the actual lights in the room off. The whole server rack is just glowing blue. Now, do you really need to do this in your own server rack? You know, maybe not. Yeah, sure, maybe it's a little extra, right? I think it looks really cool. And like I said earlier, I was gonna make this the most baller server rack I possibly could. So, you know, this just adds to that a little bit. If you thought this video was cool, check out this video here where I build a 40 terabyte storage server with 16 hard drives inside a single PC case. Also, stay tuned for part two where I set up a massive virtualization server, a switch, and a whole bunch of other stuff inside of this server app.